from Santana Block, ladies and gentlemen, OG Sag. Is it true that it started out Cribs, C-R-I-B? Talk to me about the beginning of Santana Block. When do you remember the, the Pyrus coming in? They was known as the Pyru Street Boys. Mm. And they actually affiliated with Chris themselves. When do you remember shit starting to go south with the Mexicans? I had leaders of Mexican groups confront me in regards to other Mexicans claiming Crip. And when we got Midwest is when the mix up came with us in the Chicago gang culture. What were your thoughts of uh, Crips and Bloods in New York? Well, when I first ran across them, bro, I thought it was, they was a mess. Hollywood was glorifying gangs. Did you ever think, fast forward to the year 2020, that there would be Crips in the Philippines, Crips in Australia, Crips in Alaska? What years were you most active? 71 through 87, bro. Okay, so you were there literally Almost at the beginning, because Crippen, I guess, started in, what, 69? 69. Okay. Is it true that it started out Cribs, C-R-I-B? I heard guys ahead of me said it was, and then I also heard guys ahead of me said it wasn't. Okay. So it's kind of complicated. Yeah. What, what I understand from talking to a few OGs, it definitely was not community revolution in progress. No, bro, we were nowhere near no Black Panther party, man. So throw that out the window, man. We was a gang, bro. Yeah. Is what we were. Yeah. And, and, and then if, if, it, if you wasn't Crip, you got the business, bro, from us. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, no, it, 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 it wasn't no positive in the beginning. That, that's, that's, that's the lie, bro. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I heard. How important were Mac Thomas and Donald Duck, uh, Norwood, uh, to the formation of the Compton Crips? Young Norwood came from the east side. Mac Thomas came from the east side. But Donald Norwood brought the city to businessmen, which was a legitimate set before the Crips when we had the gladiators, Slawsons, you know. We're talking about going back to... to, to to the man himself, uh, Buncha Carter, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, Donald Norwood brought us the businessmen to the city of Compton, but Mac Thomas brought the Crips to the city, bro. Mm. Okay. Coming from the east side himself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when he came, we was actually the, the Compton Crip gang, bro. It, 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 that's all we were, it wasn't nothing else. We fell under the Compton Crip gang. Mm. But when that multiplication and that fraction thing started on the west side around 71, 72, as we know it for on, on the east side and Compton as well. And that first fraction from the CC gang was actually the Grandy Crips mm -hmm. on the west side of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to me about the beginning of Santana Block. Because they started out, as, like, like you said, it was, it was um, I guess it was like the Mid Midtown and the Oak Park Boys, right? Santana Block is the neighborhood. That's where it's under now. But that's the neighborhood that I actually moved into when I came into that city. And Santana Block is is a fraction of, of four four squads uniting under one. Now the main two biggest of the groups was the Oaks Park Businessmen Crips. In the Midtown Crips, MTC, that's the gang that I was initiated in under Oliver Dwayne Roberts, Killer Wayne. Okay. When I broke off from Midtown during the conflict with Oaks Park in 1975, I co-founded the Road Street Crips with a friend, Mark Thompson. And with that, we also had Tucker Block Crips in our area, TPC. And we also had taking them over at the Red House on Pine Street. Yeah, but yeah. when Kim Tate Bullet was killed, all them fractions merged as one. Okay. And that actually happened March 20 something, 1978. I don't know the exact date. I was incarcerated at that period of time. Okay. 
Talk to me about, and, and this is crazy because there was a video circulating in, in neighborhoods like in the 90, 80s, 90s, I don't know, of this very charismatic dude. And I knew nothing about your hood, but I knew about this dude. And to this day, I guess he's he's sort of a you know I guess a a, whole, a bigger than that, big big figure, even though he passed away. Uh, but uh, OG Turtle, talk to me Peter about OG Turtle. Turtle Johnson. Peter Turtle Johnson, he's a brother of mine. Yes, sir. I believe Turtle then moved um, into the neighborhood around what seventy two, maybe seventy three, somewhere around there. Yeah, wasn't he from like Texas or something? Him and his brothers and sisters came from the state of Texas. Yeah. Yeah, we got quite a few famous people out of Compton as far as his gang culture came from. Uh, came out of Texas. That's the Scott Pudding, A.C. Bobby Louie. Quite a few people came from came from Texas to California. Mm. Okay. Was he, was he really as... Because uh, I don't know if you know a video I'm talking about. You could probably pull it up on YouTube, but if you type in OG Turtle... Santana block. That's probably that interview with the BBC. At the yeah, time. is that what it was? Okay, I was trying to figure out. It was like yeah, a news story they, or something like that. They, yeah, they came through uh, filming, and they turned around and actually used that film to criticize the Olympics in Los Angeles with it. That's what, what? they actually done with it. Yes, oh sir. shit! So it was like '84 when the Olympics were in LA. When, when, when the Olympics was in Los what? Angeles, they I... actually actually used that to expose the gang environments, you know, that that was around these events held at the Los Angeles uh, Olympics and what, what they actually used that filming for. Oh, that's fucked up. I didn't know that story that was connected like that. Yes, sir. That's what they actually used that filming for, was to criticize the Olympics about gangs and how yeah. close they were around the events. Good. Now I want to go go back to uh, Turtle. One thing I forgot to ask, because I guess the rumor is that he was ambushed in Linwood. Has that ever been solved? Does anybody know you know what happened? Really? No, sir. It hasn't been solved in a in the eyes of a criminal law or gotcha. whatever that nature. But you know, on the streets, it was solved. A few things popped up on it, bro. It was shit pop? Shit must have went crazy like right after that happened. Yeah, that 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 was a sad thing to use that brother because that that brother was in the transition of changing, mm. and as we all know, uh, he had a little money, and he was he wanted to invest that money on on some legitimate reasons and didn't get the chance to. We had some big plans, me Turtle and Charles Perry Fullerton, and two both rest in peace now. Mm. When do you remember the the Pyrus coming in into Compton? I remember the Pyrus as early as 70, 70, 70, 71. Okay, so just about a year or two after the Crips started doing their thing. Yeah, because, you know, the Pyrus always been there. They was known as the Pyrus Street Boys. Mm. And they actually affiliated with Chris themselves back in them days, you could find them all, you know, doing anything to get at the Rose Trans Skate Ring back in the days. You know, everybody got along then before it was a rivalry. But later on, the Paru Street Boys became a rival to the Chris after that. But at one time, they, they all got along, bro. It was even rumors that they was called Pyro Street one time, so it was a rumor. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take it as that. <laughs> now, when do you remember shit starting to go south with the Mexicans, with the Mexican gangs? My brother, to be honest, I'm going to tell you, I left California late 1990 I chose to raise my son somewhere else mm -hmm. so I took my kids to uh, Northern California Solano County area back at the time but it got out of control I started seeing it getting out of control bro I say about the mid 80s I, I had leaders of Mexican groups confront me in regards to other Mexicans claiming Crip 
and stuff like that. And you know, so I've seen it going sour, bro, around the mid '80s, to be honest. Even though it was kicking up steam at the same time. Mm. Would you say? Yeah. Would you say crack cocaine has a lot to do with that? I mean, people, everybody's just fighting for territory. Well, well no, what it was, um, the drugs brought that, let's say, mixture amongst the blacks and the Hispanic. And then at the time, bro, they Hollywood was glorifying gangs. You had colors, boys in the hood, menace to society, and they was actually, you know, profiling the Crips and Bloods in them shows. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? So the Crips and Bloods was come becoming more popular, even a little more popular than the Chicago gangs. You know, the vice lords and the, the disciples. You seeing more of the Crips and Bloods as far as Hollywood go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then, like I say, this gang culture was picking up steam around that time. So everybody wanted to be a Crip of Blood, whether they was Black or Mexican, bro. Because mm-hmm. they, cause they was seen to be the most popular of all the groups. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let's take yourself back to 1971 when you first started Crippin. Did you ever mm-hmm. think? Did you ever think? Fast forward to the year 2020, that there would be Crips in the Philippines, Crips in Australia, Crips in Alaska, Crips oh, in everywhere. Oh Lord, I know, <laughs> I know, Raymond Washington and Chucky and and and, and, and with Melvin Hardy and this few other big bros, they got a chance to see it with their own eyes. They themselves, they they were also on social media before we lost them. But oh no, no, bro! And I, I, you, you never expected to get as huge as it had. And like I say, I put that on Hollywood. I put that on Hollywood, bro. And I also give Chucky some props on that because of the international attention he received while being on Condemn Road in San Quentin. And, 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 and I give the credit to that, bro. To be honest, in regards to that, mm. where was the first uh, state that you heard that Crips popped up in? You know, back in the day, where you were like, "What the fuck? There's Crips in what? New Mexico?" Or like, <laughs> well, well, to be honest, um, Seattle, Washington. I was there in 1987 myself. Okay, because Santana but, but, Block is up there too, right? Yes, sir. We we there in Seattle, Washington as well. So. Most people went when when when, when 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 gangs members start realizing that it was better profits elsewhere in regards to money because it's starting to become about money. A lot of us went northwest first. We went up to Seattle, Washington, with it, bro. And uh, we had we had Santana's. You had a uh, kitchen. You had a uh, Bay Trey Gangsters was there. I ran across some Denver lanes out there. Damn. You had Am Street Power Rules when the Santana Rivals was there. So a lot of people had went northwest as far as Cali go, but later on they started going south and midwest with it as well. And when we got midwest is when the mix up came with us in the Chicago gang culture. Let me ask you a question. What do you think about, because they have a, even though, you know, they, they're they Crips and Bloods, they have their own style of it. What are your thoughts or what were your thoughts of uh, Crips and Bloods in New York? Well, when I first ran across them, bro, I thought it was, they was a mess. You know what I mean? Uh, especially they Bloods, man. I, I, I seen the Bloods in New York mainly making a mockery of the Bloods on the West Coast, especially with the UBN. UBN, yeah. And, 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 and what the UBN was representing there it was totally opposite of what the Bloods was doing here on the West Coast with that. Hmm. They they made their UBN a game. The UBN on the West Coast was an organization, bro, and not a game. So I thought it was a mess, but over the years, uh, cause I've, I've been communicating with a 
with Bloods and Crips out in New York. But over the years, I say these past five, seven years, I've been on social media. The Crips then got a lot better in the state of New York in regards to with the Cripping. Some of the worst areas to me, though, as far as getting the Cripping twisted up is Georgia and Baltimore, Maryland. Them the main two. Really? If Explain how. Me, They, they they got mixed up in the Chicago gang culture. They fell under the six point star, six point structure instead of the crypt protocol, and it they just were sidewinded with it, brother. And, 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 and it, was, it was wrong them doing that. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I heard a lot of West Coast, you know, or LA dudes ain't they don't like the whole the whole um, six point star the whole that type of no mixture. bro it ain't it, 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 it's not that we don't like the six point stuff I respect the six point I respect the five point because it's structure you understand mm -hmm. but the thing is man us Crips we a nation I said and we fall under no other nation but God bro you understand what I'm saying right. so when, when, when they got the mingling amongst each other in the Midwest, the Crips was allied with the disciples, the Bloods was allied with the Vice Lords. Then we had this uh, alliance thing come about where they was falling under the six point structure with the eight ball alliance. And all we were saying is it was all in good intent. You understand? They, they was mainly trying to ally with each other be, and partner up because they was having issues with the same people. Oh, okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But where it went wrong with, you can't put us Crips under the disciples. No, you can't put us under their six points. We a nation of our own. And we fall up under nobody but God, bro. Mm -hmm. You understand? And we Crips have our own protocol and constitution to follow mm -hmm. you understand so when they start following the six that was like a means of disrespecting us you, you understand when we had our own thing mm -hmm. so it, it ain't like we don't like the six or we don't like the five we respect that mm -hmm. but the thing is you can't put us trips up under that because we are our own nation as they are mm -hmm. so that, yeah. that's where it stands in regards to that Okay. I, I I love the growth and development. I love what you're trying to do. That's the same thing I've been trying to do all these years. Crip on a positive note. You understand? Mm. Because when I first made change in my life, I fell under Africa and red, black, and green, bro. You understand? Mm. But I felt uncomfortable with that. Trying to learn Africa trying to learn all this blackness from millions of years ago when the only thing i knew best was the gang culture i knew the gang culture like the back of my hand mm -hmm. you understand i knew that through and through you know the truth the non-truth and everything in regards to the gang culture mm -hmm. so i said to myself why can't i just be what i am and be a better person still yeah, you know what? I like that. Crip on a positive so, note. That's a, so that's a good chose, tagline. So I say, you know what? I'm not doing this red, black, and green no more because I'm, I'm Crip, homie. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stay a Crip, but I'm going to keep it positive, though. So that's the stance I took on it. And that was around 87 when I've done that. What, what was the general consensus of real gangsters who were already 10 years deep into it like you were? What was your general consensus of, of gangster rap when it hit big, like in the mid to late 80s? Well, we, we used to think they was perpetrating a fraud, on, homie, to be honest. Yeah. You understand? Because us as the Serious Brothers Consultant, the SBC group, we had a song. And the title of the song was Y'all Stole Our Image. And that song was addressed to N.W.A. because N.W.A. wore all black. Mm -hmm. Like Santana Block. It took on the old all black stone, and that belonged to Santana, homie. That don't belong to nobody else but us. Yeah, you understand? everybody knows that. 
So when they, when they started using it, we was like, these niggas been up here stealing our image you can on. You understand know what I mean? Ah. So, so we, us as Santanas, we kind of felt wishy-washy in regards to that. But we was also appreciative that they was putting the city on the map a little more as well. So mm -hmm. it kind of worked both ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. Listen to that, kids out there. The biggest group in history, arguably, NWA, their whole image was pretty much based on the color and the whole way that people dressed on this particular block in Compton. I mean, let that soak in for a minute. That's that's pretty that's pretty fucking deep. Exactly. Mm. You know, every poverty gang in the city was gunning for us, so a lot of people didn't want that burden of representing all black, bro. Mm. You understand? Because if you walked around the city or drove around the city and all black, you had a big target on you, on you bro. Mm. Why, you all, why all black? Why did, why did Santana roll with all black? For Bullet. They did it for Bullet. Bullet wore black black bandana, bro, when they fell under the Santana boys. You know, did the Santana thing. Bullet them wore black, black, black bandana. I was told that Bullet them wore the black bandana because they want to be neutral from the blue and the red bro it's from my understanding okay. See, like i say i was in, i was locked up in jail for a homicide robbery at the local park at the time that bully was killed okay i used to get feedback from my mother you know bullet action about me the side coming home etc cetera, etc cetera. But the thing was, uh, that's what I was told. You know, it was mainly Bullet, Allen D. Ping, uh, Jeffrey and them um, that started the Santana, the group Santana. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, after Bullet was killed, it was Turtle and Rob Franklin that put the block crypt to the Santana. At the height of when shit was really, really popping, you know, um, in, in Compton, when you guys were literally the murder capital of the of the country mm -hmm. what um what what were the main gangs that you know santana was beefing with i'm pretty sure every pyro but name some name some sets that you guys specifically were just really it was really popping with brother brother, brother in my era brother we our reputation was built on our wars with the pyro gang brother you understand and, and, and we was probably one of the last few sets to fall into that crip on crip thing bro mm. we probably one of the last few sets us like us in atlantic drive and, and a few others we, we we were the last gangs to get involved in that oh no shit. yes sir okay our main our main rival was the south sides and the palmer blocks mm. as far as crip crip issue I know Nutty Block and Lantana had a little bit stuff like that. Like I say, back in 1975, Midtown and Oaks Park fell out. Wasn't no killing behind it. You know, just a few people jumped on, pissed and whooped and stuff like that. There wasn't nobody killed behind it. But as far as the killing amongst the Crips go, our main rivals were the Palmer Blocks and the Southside Crips at that time. Okay. That must have been pretty disheartening to once be a unit yeah, the thing is it's a, it's a lot of stuff like you know what i say is it's a lot of things that goes on but it's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that people is not aware of and it could have actually been a lot different than it turned out to be it could have easily been a santana palmer block conflict than it was a Palmer Block South Side. See, a lot of people ain't aware that when that when that conflict broke out that night, I had quite a few homeboys knocking on my bedroom window trying to get guns to return to the incident. And when I asked them what was going on, and they said, "Oh, these Palmer Blocks is tripping." I refused to give them weapons. I said, "Man, y'all got to fight sometimes, homie." Oh, and I shut the window on them. And if I had to pass a couple of guns out of the window, I know my homeboys would have would have shot them guns. Mm. And nine out of ten, they would have shot some palmers. 
What exactly? So it could e- yeah. it could easily be Santana Palmer Block than it was the Palmer Block Southside. Yeah. Damn. What what led yeah. what led to the first Crip on Crip rivalry in Compton that you remember? Like the whole Palmer, when, 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 like what specifically when, happened? Did like somebody you know t- take somebody's girl? They killed Big Brim from South. They killed Big Brim from Southside. Okay. It was a, it was a dance at the wine at the local YMCA. The South Side us. The homies go to the dance to dance. The Palmer Block showed up. What's the cause for them arguing and whatever else? I don't know that case. But from my understanding, the Palmer Block had a cousin from Harlem 30s hanging out with him that night. He actually was the one that had a gun and started shooting and ended up killing Lil Brim. From my understanding, when when they told when the South Sides heard this and that, whatever, and 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 and, and the Palmer Blocks refused to get the boy up, uh, South Sides chose to, to hound me against them. So that that's the story to that, bro. Are you familiar with Takashi Six Nine? Blood yes, rapper. Sir, I heard it. I, I heard it, dude. Are you familiar with the story? How he just became yes, a blood. Sir. Okay, yes, so you've been on top of things. I would love to know your perspective on Takashi Six Nine. Well, from my understanding, they kidnapped him and tried to kill him. Mm-hmm. From my understanding, that so, is true. So the the the, the see him turning on him, <laughs> that's no big deal to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, you y'all try to kill him, he don't feel he a part of y'all anymore. So. I can easily see him doing what he did in regards to that, if that's the true case. Hmm. Okay. So I, My, more know, importantly, that's... more importantly, I, I was I was leaning towards the fact that he was claiming a blood set, but he wasn't. He he joined the Bloods on the strength of becoming this big rap star. So he he didn't grow up, cl- you know, gang banging like. Well, you did. well, well, that 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 exactly. Uh, from my understanding, the, the, the Bloods who was in position. In regards to them nine trays, yeah, saw money in that boy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and brought him aboard because they already had members who rapped and made a little money in the rap industry, and Jim Jones and a few other boys. You understand? So I guess they recognized something in him. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? So they want to bring him on board in, in order to, to tap into that money. But uh, but like I say, bro. Um, if you turn around and try to kill someone and you don't get on to accomplish it, he he gonna have a whole totally different mind frame in regards to you guys. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so when 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 you take risks, it's gonna be precautions. You know, you know behind that. That's so true. And man. so so they 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 took a risk. That kidnapping the boy supposed to when they popped the trunk open he was able to hop out and run and get away from him some mm-hmm. from what i've been hearing you uh, know what i mean so yeah a- a- after that it, it wasn't no coming back to them i'm sure of that yeah yeah that makes so you make perfect sense og um i want to ask you because uh, a lot of these rappers do join gangs or link up with gangs for protection reasons, security reasons, when they go from town to town, when they're moving from hood to hood, performing and stuff like that. Did you ever, I guess some would call it extortion, but I mean, did you ever experience any major rappers, you know, that came, because Biggie Smalls, I don't know if you're aware, he he linked up with Southside, you know, and whenever yeah, he came to L.A. I, 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 yeah. I know that whole, I know all that yeah, there, bro. Yeah. yeah, see, I'm talking to you like you're not the OG. I apologize, man. Mm, um, no, I, but let me ask you, do you, did you experience any of that, or do you know any, a little bit behind the scenes stuff about that? Yeah, I know that, man. Like I say, bro, you know, like my hood in the south side has been... Uh, OG, I, I lost you. I lost you. Can you start that over? Okay. You said your hood in south side what? I said, my hood and south side is a big, big rival at the presence. You know, it's been a lot of love lost between my little homies and they little homies, you know what I mean? But as G out of the area, we have understanding and respect and love for one another. Bro. You understand what I mean? So we kind of stay out of the way of that mm-hmm. in regards to, to, to us. 
But I, I know all them guys, and then Big Lane, and mm-hmm. and you know them as, as little kids. I'm talking about five, six years old, little kids, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I see them guys grow in, 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 into it, into it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I knew them. Big and Puff Daddy and they'll sit down with them guys and and all that there. I, I know all about the when they took the boy from Death Row Chain, the power room chain at the mall and it caused conflict out mm-hmm. there in the streets with it. All, all that there is true, yeah. Mm-hmm. The bad boys did employ, I mean, he did he want to lie about it, but yeah. Bad boy did slide south side a little something. Mm-hmm. It looked out for him with me and Cap. Damn. We lost uh, someone who was going to be a legend this year. Crip, Rolling 60s. Uh, we lost him in a horrible way. You know, talking about Nipsey Hussle, of course. Yeah, I would sure. love to hear the OG's perspective on just the whole situation and how we can hopefully prevent something like that from not happening again. Bro, bro, that 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 that's, that 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 was sad. That was sad. I and mean, we had a potential billionaire, and we let somebody take that from the community like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's man. Oh yeah, that yeah. That that was real sad, bro. That was real sad, bro. I I I really I I. It's kind of tough for me to kind of speak on, mm-hmm. be, because the the the, the role in the sixties is, is, is an infamous infamous gang, a big thing, and when it comes to their thing, people outside they thing shouldn't be stepping on nobody's toes over there, bro. You you understand where I'm, where I'm getting at in yeah. regards to this? Yeah. So they. They they're handling it in the right way. Everybody is trying to make it seem like that that hood took took cuz out mm-hmm. when it was just one renegade. You, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. They, they 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 gonna take care of that, bro. Yeah. They, 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 the 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 sixties are the real deal, bro. So they yeah. they they are handling. I have number admiration love and respect for the 60s man so yeah and if something positive if something positive came out of it it was the fact that the 60s and the h rays are at some sort of peace right now you know some sort whatever that whatever the case is but i want to ask you og do you think there will ever be true peace amongst gangs in la I hope so, but if I had to give you an honest answer, I'm going to tell you no. Yeah, it's too much blood and too much personal heartache. I, I think you're right, man. If, if, if I had to give you yeah. an honest answer, bro, yeah. I'm going to say no, but I would hope so. Yeah. I like I, I like so. I like your thinking, man. This was really a pleasure. I'm going to keep it 100% real with you. Um, I like your whole crip with a positive, um, t- whatever you said, that tagline you said earlier. Keep that pushing. Like, I really feel like yeah. you could you could do something with that, man. I yeah, see you're I active mean, online. Make you just keep doing these type of interviews. You know, hook up with the Kev Max of the world and the um the uh, Alex Alonzo. Well, I know Alonzo's. Kev Max personally, man. I yeah. mind what he do. I actually been interviewed when he when he was just doing all hood oh. magazine. Oh, that's but cool. I haven't had the chance to sit down and do the interview on video. Now, him would, and Alonzo been yeah. wanting to get at me in regard to a video um, interview, but like I said, I was living up north at the time. Just do more interviews like this, man. You deserve to, to hear, people deserve to hear your story, and, and you're, you're cripping with a positive message, which, which I think is dope, and, and just keep talking to kids and, and, and do whatever you can while, while you're still here. It was a pleasure. I really would hope we can do this again, man. I would love to talk with you in a couple months or so and, yeah, well, and, and do it again. Time. Yeah, anytime. cool. I feel like I owe you anytime. lunch or dinner, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'll, I'll stay close in touch with you, OG Sag. It was definitely a pleasure, and you have a great night, man. Uh, you guys, God bless us all. Thank you, man. Peace.